Good morning, everyone. It's my great honor to be here to share my presentation on fundamental education in China. Here are the highlights. First part, Confucian influence and imperial examination system. As an ancient civilization with a history of 5,000 years, China has had a, a tradition of attaching importance to education since ancient times. The ancient Confucianism and imperial examination system has had a great influence on Chinese education. Now let's come to Confucius. As a Chinese educationist, politician, philosopher, and founder of Confucianism. He is the first in the world to propose his education ideas, like in teaching, there should be no distinction of classes. Teach students in accordance with their aptitude, which contained ideas of Attaching importance to social reality, caring for life, and respecting life with the purpose of achieving people oriented learning. Many of his educational ethics still have very high social value. To be honest, the whole education and educators in China, including me, have been deeply impacted by him and his idea. That's why he is extremely highly respected and honored as the greatest of ancient Chinese sages. Now, the imperial examination system in China. Imperial examination system began at 605 and was finally abolished in 1905. In fact, in China, system of competitive examinations for recruiting officials that link the state and the society dominated education, and its roots date back to the imperial university established in the Han Dynasty. The best characteristics of traditional education are examination, confirmation, and competition, which probably reflect the educational situation of today. Well, equality is a very important aspect in tra traditional education, insofar as examination is concerned. One of the lectures of imperial examination system that has a bearing on today's view on education is that it makes the people believe that individuals, even from the most humble backgrounds, could rise to the higher social class through education if they could survive the rigors of studies and examinations. That's why exam is still a very important part of and integral to whole system of education. However, qualities of all aspects are encouraged and the continuous innovations towards co uh, college entrance examination are being conducted now in China. Now let's come to the facts. Since the new education has replaced the traditional education, the law of nine year compulsory education was enacted and put into use in July 1986. It says education is required and free for Chinese citizens aged from 6 to 15. And parents must pay for small fees for books and uniforms. There are usually average 35 students in each class, but often 40 to 50. And in some other places, maybe more than that.
China is the largest country with a population of 1.4 billion. So it has the largest educational system in the world. There are altogether more than 200 billion students. Two, there are more than 200 million students with over 9 million teachers in China. Education in China is a state-run system of public education run by the government with a small number of private schools and universities, but almost no, no homeschooling. Our government provides ed education for all the people. There is a good saying, knowledge can change one's destiny. That is why the whole society pays much attention to education. We do take education seriously. At present, China's education structure mainly includes preschool, compulsory education, special education, high school education, higher education, adult training, and literacy education and private education. Let's talk about fundamental education. According to law, education is free and compulsory for nine years in China. Many children start their schoolings at nursery school as early as two or three years old. And then kindergarten, primary school, junior middle school, and a senior high school or vocational school and the universities or college. This is uh, uh, the schedule of uh, grade one, senior grade one students. We can see in a normal day school, students in junior or senior high school will go to school at about seven o'clock in the morning and go back home at about four or later in the afternoon on Monday to Friday. In a boarding school like my school in China, they stay at a school for six days and go back home at about 4 p.m. after two periods on Saturday and then go back to school on Monday morning. It's a fact that Chinese schools have a hard work ethic resulting students success and the teachers in China are given more respect. We have to admit that the Chinese schools wrote memorization and focus on math, science, and Chinese and English are still popular. Children have traditionally learned by repetition and memorizing materials without asking questions. Well, in fact, we are carrying out some teaching reforms on syllabus, curriculum, teaching approaches, Zhongkao, and a gao kao. It, of course, it's a huge challenge. But we can see Chinese middle school students have very high learning burden. Now let's come to exams. In China, for, for all the middle school students, the two important uh, exams are Zhongkao and Gaokao. Zhongkao means the Senior Education Entrance Examination and Gaokao, National College Entrance Examination. When taking college entrance examination, Besides the three main subjects, students will choose three from science subject, physics, chemistry, biology, and humanities, history, geography, geography, and politics. 
the results of the exam will determine which university take, uh, test takers will attend. No one will deny the fact that, that college entrance examination is one of the most important and influential tests to Chinese students. It's been playing such an important role in Chinese students' life, and many students devote 12 years or even a longer time to it. Actually, some students complain that Gokou robs Chinese students of their curiosity, creativity, and childhood. This is the exam day. Yearly, the college entrance examination are held in June, but this year, because of the coronavirus, it was delayed one month later. And altogether, 10.71 million students will take the college entrance examination this year. So we can see there are so many parents here outside the school. Well, their, their children are taking the exam. So we can see that the whole society take these matters serious. Now let's come to private education, English education, and uniform. That's private education. On September 1st, 2003, there uh, has been a law passed to law the private education in China. And right now, there are so many private schools and uh, more than half billion students in private schools in China. And we can say that private schools have pioneered cooperation with foreign partners in the running of schools and many foreign universities have entered China this way which has both improved the quality of China's education resources and opened new channels for students' further studies. Now let's come to English education. As a teacher of English in China, I have to admit that English is paid too much attention in China. I mean, students and teachers and parents and the whole society, we paid you know, too much learning English. Some kids are forced to learn English in kindergarten by their parents who believe that it is important for them to take college entrance examination and essential to be one of the international citizens in nowadays global village. That's why international schools and the foreign teachers are so popular in China. Now let's come to uniform. Many schools in China require the use of a school uniform for both sports wear and their daily clothes, both for which will change depending on the season. Uniforms can also differ in design depending on the school, making it easy for people to identify which school a student attends. Proponents of school uniforms are, uh, argue that uniforms are a unique form of culture, remove the press uh, pressure of students comparing clothing and allow the faculty and others to identify, identify students and their respective schools. And this is the most popular style in most Chinese schools, like in my school. Some others you can see is more fashionable um, than these, maybe 
these are what students prefer. But actually, a lot of students around me, they just complain they don't like their uniforms at all. They can't wait to put on their their bearable, you know, clothes when they go back home. Now let's come to the differences. First, I'll share you with some pictures of education in China. Here are our classroom, our lab, our campus. In primary school, in China, in the West. Now here's high school in China and in the West. By comparing the two different parts, we can see that in China, students have too much homework to do, to do every day. In the uh, in school, we traditionally can um, use rote memorization, and uh, we just uh, you know pay much attention on exam. And uh, in this way, Chinese students have very high pressure of studies and exams, and there's usually you know large class size in China. And in the West, the students have less homework to do. They prefer teamwork and game and uh, have a lot of fun. And usually there is small size of class. Uh, in this way, come to a comp conclusion. Compared with Western countries, the education in China is more traditional and more systematic. And it is better for ch children's intelligence development. Training and education for many years also enable students to develop the collective consciousness, the strong sense of responsibility and the discipline. Uh, to be honest, there are still some problems. Now we can see like this. Uh, however, besides these problems, Chinese education still has made great achievements for nearly 20% of the world population have been educated. And nearly 100 of total population in China receives at least nine years compulsory education. Curriculum reforms are undergoing pretty well. Higher education growth up quickly and teachers are more respected in China. A series of educational laws are more gated and revised. All in all, the modern strategy of rejuvenating the country through science and education put science and technology and education in the priority position. The contemporary international exchange and cooperation made Chinese education developed to a deeper level. Chinese education not only plays an important role in inheriting and developing Chinese culture, but also makes great contributions to the development of world civilization. The main goal of China's education development in the future is to improve the quality of education in all round ways and make important progress in education development. And we are on the way to improve quality and promote equality of fundamental education in China.
That's all. Thank you.